Alrighty, we got to talk about market manipulation in this video. Very, very big subject that I think needs to be discussed at a time period like we're in right now. And what I am seeing out there is a time period we're going through that this is kind of like the finishing wreck of retail, as I call it, and a lot of traps that are being set for retail right now as we speak. Um, and I'm going to show you a video here uh, that I came across a long, long time ago that goes into market manipulation and how a lot of the funds will do it, how Wall Street will do it. And you're not going to find a lot of information about this. And I, I, I give this individual some credit for at least disclosing this because what is talked about in this video, a lot of people are very, very quiet about this for obvious reasons, right? Now, first off, I just I want to start here with actually SoFi. SoFi, very popular stock in the retail community. It looked like it was maybe coming back just to fall back to pretty much right around new uh, all-time lows for this stock here today. You know, a move like that, for a big retail stock like that is uh, very discouraging for the retail crowd. And if we think about what Wall Street ultimately would like, Wall Street doesn't really like people that are individual stock picking because we're all messing up the market, right? If you look at like uh, the biggest example of this would have been like the GameStop, the AMC situation, right? Of like, hey, you guys are screwing up the market. Like get in line, buy the index funds because like you're, you're messing this whole thing up for us, right? And so the fact that retail wants to buy individual stocks, Wall Street for the most part does not like that. They like it if you're giving them the money, right? And they know exactly where that money's going. Oh, it's being deployed over here. So they get to add to positions before everybody else does and things like that. If Wall Street comes in, scoops up a bunch of shares, it skyrockets the stock up, they miss out on 20, 30, 40% on that stock. They're like, uh, you could just cost me 20% on that stock because you bunch of retail, you just bought into that before I got into that, right? And so Wall Street's very incentivized for retail to not actually uh, be, <laughs> be uh, individual investors. They want them to just invest in index funds, things like that, even like ETFs, right? And you look at uh, the ARK ETF, this is a big one that I think they want to destroy. And the main, the main reason is a Kathy Wood is looked at as kind of like, um, you know, I don't want to call it like a hero to the retail investors. I wouldn't necessarily call it that, but like a big figure, right, of like a, a somebody that's successful that's picking individual stocks. And she gives hope to other folks that, that pick stocks, right? And so the idea is crush Kathy Wood, crush that ETF, and you'll be very discouraging to anybody that's in retail that was looking up to her uh, a couple of years ago as like a god. Now they look at her as like, oh, yeah, she failed. Her people are failing. Then I got to fail as well, right? So crush Kathy Wood, crush the ARK ETF. If you look at something like Tesla, there's an interesting trap that's being set up here with Tesla right now where... Tesla's been doing, obviously, very, very well in the market. Um, the trap that I see coming here with Tesla, and it's a, a trap I've seen before, is Wall Street is setting retail up for the folks that aren't getting into the, the funds yet and, and haven't like get thrown in the cards that have gone to, to index funds. They want everybody to kind of pile into a stock like Tesla that's popular in the retail community. And the reason being, essentially, is... Um, you see it, it's holding up really well. It's doing really, really well. And I can tell you as soon as uh, things slow a little bit from the demand side, because of, let's say a recession happens, let's say interest rates keep going up and not as many people want to buy vehicles, things like that. Dude, they're ready to set that stock down 50% plus. They'll do it. They've done it before. They've held that stock down for many, many years before. While well, retail bought in or other folks bought in, they gave up, they shorted, they gave up, they, they went long, they gave up. And they've done it before. They'll do it again with a stock like Tesla. And I even know a lot of people on YouTube, for instance, that have 80 to 90% of their entire portfolio in a stock like Tesla, right? Which honestly sets a horrible example for the market. I don't have any, any uh, like stock that has even more than 20%. In, in one stock, right? But they're trying to set that as an example, have everybody kind of pile in there and then they'll kill that stock off as well, right? And all of a sudden, that will kind of be like, oh my gosh, like we can't even make money in Tesla now. Like, are you kidding me? This is the way they, they set it up and they, they make you believe like, because imagine you're retail and you own a SoFi, or you own other individual stocks that have been getting killed. Meanwhile, Tesla, you start to think, oh, I can just put all of my money in Tesla. That's a smart idea, right? Because, I mean, shoot, it's been performing so well. <laughs> They'll kill that as well, man. Just, just wait on it. Uh, of course, Air Gaming, company that this isn't like this some money loser. It's a profitable company, great cash flows, uh, great business model, very, very proven. They don't want a stock like this to succeed right now because this is a stock that obviously a lot of retail's in. 
And so even a stock like that, they're going to do everything in their power to try to keep this stock down, no momentum at all in something like a Corsair Gaming, right? They want folks to be in index funds. Index funds are easy for Wall Street to deal with because the money just flows in from people's paychecks or whatever, right? They see that money going in the index funds. It gets distributed around the stocks. And if you're uh, planning on any sort of buying in positions, exiting out of positions, if you know everybody's like, piling into index funds, you can see the money coming in. It makes your job on Wall Street very, very easy. You don't have anybody screwing it up for you. You don't have anybody messing up the whole system, right? You get to see that money coming through. You know, oh, there's going to be $10 million put into this stock over here. There's $20 million being put over here in this stock. There's $100 mil coming in next week into this stock. You can set everything up. It's like, it's easy. It's a piece of cake, man. But the more folks that are uh, actually individual stock picking, the more this is going to screw up the whole system for you in the end. And you as somebody on Wall Street, right, big money, you don't, you don't want anybody screwing this up. If anybody screws this up for you, it can be the difference between you making another you know, $50 million, another $500 million or not, right? Uh, we're talking about big money at the end of the day. I want to play this video. I think it's a good video. Uh, Jim Cramer, I know he gets a lot of crap all the time, but uh, I do give him credit. And I know some people like to destroy him here because they, they say, you know, you were part of this, right? As he, when he was running his hedge fund. But at the end of the day, I just appreciate that he's disclosing a lot of stuff we're going to get into in this video here because this is the type of stuff that most folks on Wall Street don't even disclose. And, it, you know, it's kind of sad. And this is, this is from 2006. Dude, we're in 2022. I can tell you a lot more stuff goes on nowadays than, than this, essentially. Jim Confidential, I'm Aaron Task, joined again by Jim Kramer. Jim, welcome. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. Uh, there's a lot of economic data out today, but I want to talk about something else first. Again, today we have the misdirection from the futures. The futures point of an up market, and as of right now, stocks are down again. Is this just because it's the holiday period that we're seeing this? You know, a lot of times when I was short at my hedge fund and I was position short, meaning I needed it down, uh, I would... Uh, create a, um, a level of activity beforehand that could drive the futures. It doesn't take much money. Uh, similarly, if, uh, or if I were long and I would want to make things a little bit rosy, I would go in and take a bunch of stocks and make sure that they are, they're higher. And maybe commit $5 million in capital to do it, and I could affect it. Uh, what you're seeing now is maybe, it probably is a bigger market now, maybe you need $10 million in capital to knock this stuff down. But it's a fun game. And it's a lucrative game, and you, you can move it up and then fade it. That often creates a very negative feel. So let's say you take a longer-term view intraday, and you say, listen, I'm going to boost the futures, and then when the real sellers come in, real market comes in, they're going to knock it down, and it's going to create a negative, uh, negative view. That's a strategy very worth doing when you're, val when you're valued on a day-to-day -day basis. And I would encourage anyone who's in the hedge fund game to do it because it's legal. <laughs> oh, man, I just can't. You know, it's just so funny. But, uh, you know, that's absolutely something uh, that's obviously done in the market. And those sorts of things psychologically are very, very damaging for retail folks, especially if they haven't been through the market for a long, long time. To, like, get excited about a stock coming back, whether it be in a, a day, a week, a month, whatever, all for it just to fall back down and, like, oh, you know, that's when you just start thinking about, I'm going to throw in the cards and screw this. I'm going to index funds or I'm leaving the stock market in general and things like that. Um, so it's actually a, 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 you know, that's a game that is absolutely played out there. Right. And it, um, it is a very quick way to make money and very satisfying. Okay. Um, well, oh, by the way, no one else in the world would ever admit that, but I can care. That's right. And you can say that here. I can't. I'm not going to say it on TV. Um, well, on a related note, there's so many more hedge funds today than when you were right. managing your hedge fund. Right. Do you think that, that, does that exacerbate the moves or does it make it well, tougher? Well, you know, the, the hedge funds are positioned long short, okay, not just long like mutual funds. So it's really vital these next six days because of your payday. You've really got to control the market. You can't let it lift. When you get a research in motion, it's really important to use a lot of your firepower to knock that down. because You can't let it lift. And if you look at um, you know, how short a lot of the hedge funds have been on a lot of the retail stocks the past, you know, let's call it six to nine months, they can't let these babies get any wiggle room. Okay? They've got to try to destroy them as much as possible, try to manipulate them down as much as possible, because the more lift they get, obviously, you know, it's, at some point in time, you just lose it, right? Uh, short sellers ended up losing it with Tesla over a given period of time, right? Where there was a, they, they had it for a long time. They had Tesla for years. And then finally, Tesla got that lift off, right? Um, and they, just, they were never able to kind of get it back. And that's because kind of you obviously risk in a lot of these retail stocks that, you know, we, we go through a lot of times. And if they get too much lift, they're, you know, eventually you kind of just leave the atmosphere. Cream of the market today. So, I mean, let's say I were, uh, I were short. What I would do is I would hit a lot of guys with Vrim.
Now, you can't foment. That's a violation of... of foment? Yeah. You can't foment. foment. You can't create a yourself an impression that a stock's down. But you do it anyway because the SEC doesn't right. understand it. So, you, I mean, it's that's the only sense that I would say this is illegal. But a, a hedge fund that's not up a lot really has to do a lot now to save itself. So... Um, this is different from what I was talking about at the beginning where I would be buying the cues and stuff. Right. This is actually just blatantly illegal. But when you have six days and your company may be in doubt because you're down, I think it's really important to foment, uh, if I were one of these guys, foment an impression that research in motion isn't any good because research in motion is the key today. So, you know, you would, you would hit this guy and that guy when you would see an offering. When you see a guy who's bidding, you'd wipe out that guy very quickly. And what I used to do um, was called... Okay, so real quick, I think this is worth addressing. Listen to the games that are played, right? This is like a high-level chess, I call it. And so if you think, if anybody out there thinks like, oh, Wall Street, they're not trying to uh, manipulate any things or play any games, like, wake up. Wake up. That's all I'll say about that. Like, wake up. Time to wake up. Uh, this stuff has been going on for, uh, you know, uh, 100 years now, and it's going to be going on in the future. Uh, you know, uh, this is absolutely something that goes on. You just have to deal with that as being part of, of an individual in the market at the end of the day, right? And not get caught up into these traps and understand the games they're kind of playing there. If I wanted to go higher, I would take and bid, take and bid, take and bid. Um, and if, um, if I wanted to go lower, I'd hit an offer, hit an offer, hit an offer. And I could get a stock like Rim for maybe, that might cost me 50 15, 20 million, uh, Annie, to knock Rim down. But it would be fabulous because it would beleaguer all the moron longs who are also keying on research and motion. So there I see we're seeing, on today yeah, we're seeing that. That's, you know, again, when your company's in a survival mode, it's really important to defeat research and motion and get the Pisanis of the world and the people talking about it as if there's something wrong with Rim. Then you would call the journal and you get the Bozo reporter on research and motion and you would feed that there's a Palm's got a killer it's going to give away. These are all the things you must do on a day like today. And if you're not doing it, maybe you shouldn't be in the game. Okay. Uh, another stock that a lot of people are focused on right now seems to be Apple. Yeah, you Apple's very it. important to spread the rumor that um, that both uh, Verizon and Bell and uh, ATT have decided they don't like the phone. Right. That's a very easy one to do because it's also <laughs> you want to spread. <laughs> That's so sad. Like literally, th it's so sad. Like Verizon, AT and T don't like the phone. Think about this for a moment, right? Imagine you bought into that, like, oh, you know, wow, they don't like the iPhone, and I got to sell my Apple stock <laughs> back then. It's like what? What are you talking about? By the way, I think this uh, this interview was actually from 07. I, I saw they put 06 here, but I think it's from 07 because obviously uh, iPhone was showed off in, in 07. So, you know, these are the sorts of games that get people out of stocks, right? Uh, and people believe it, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. These big phone companies, they don't like the iPhone. Oh, gosh, I got to sell my, my, my Apple stock. I guess this iPhone's not going to be something, right? And it's just, ah, oh, it's so frustrating. But these are the games that are played. And people... People fall for it. That's why these games are very lucrative, as Jim points out here, right? Jim Cramer points this out. The reason this is so lucrative is because people fall for it, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, Apple's bad. Oh. Rumor that it's not going to be ready for Mac World. And this is very easy because the people who write about Apple want that story. And you can claim that it's credible because you spoke to someone at Apple because Apple isn't in a d doesn't. Right, they're not going to comment. They're not going right, to So it's really an idea. Exactly. So you can just, uh, like, basically make up a rumor get it on the press releases, get it out there to the media, and then they'll run with it. And it's like, oh, yeah, this is from a, you know, somebody inside the company we heard this from. And it's like, okay, where's the proof? There's no proof. It's literally just a rumor. But the market can trade based upon that rumor, which is just ridiculous. And I would, is. again, if I were a short Apple, I would be working very hard today to get that. And the way you would do that is you pick up the phone, you call six trading desks, and you say, listen, I just got off the phone with my contact at Verizon. And he has already said, listen, we're not, we're a lucky G house. Uh, we're a Samsung house. We, we, we're a Motorola house. There's no room for Apple. They want too much. They, we're not going to let them in. This is not, we're not going to let them do what they did to music. And, you know, I think that's a very effective way to keep a stock down. Right. I might also, by the way, because the stock at 84, 85, a little bit of capital, you go buy some January 80 puts that makes it look like there's going to be something going on. So maybe you, you know, give Morgan an order to buy 1,000 Jan 80 puts, then you go position limit with, uh, you By know. the way, just so everybody knows, when an iPhone did first come out, they did have a deal with uh, AT&T. Big deal. And uh, actually brought a lot of people to AT&T who wanted to use the iPhone back in those days. It was kind of like an exclusive partnership.
you use a hat firm that doesn't know what the heck it's doing. Maybe you go to UBS for puts. And, and you just kind of create an image that there's going to be news next week. And that's going to frighten everybody. Right. And then you, they all go out and say, large put buyer at uh, UBS. And then they call Pisani again. You have to use those guys. And say, listen, I'm a buy you know, I see a big buyer of puts. And I'm told that it's like, it's SAC. You would do that too. Um, and these are all uh, what's really going on under the market that you don't see. Right. And don't, but, nobody else talks about right, it. But what, what, what's important when you're in that hedge fund mode is to not do anything remotely truthful. Because the truth is so against your view right. that it's important to create a new truth to develop a fiction. And um, the, the fiction is developed uh, by almost anybody who's down like 2% to up 6% here. You can't take any chances. You can't have the market up any more than it is if you're up 6 Because starting Jan 2, you'll have all your money come out. So right. what would you do if you're in that situation and you feel like you're desperate is that you would do these actions? So you're talking about the mechanics of the market. Well, you know, the mechanics the, are much more important than the fundamentals. Oh, okay. Well, but in terms of the fundamentals, you've been writing about how Who you cares think. about the fundamentals? Research and motion just blew out the court. Right. But look what people can do. I mean, that's a fabulous thing. The great thing about the market is it has nothing to do with the actual stocks. Right. Now, look, over maybe two <laughs> weeks from now, the buyers will come to their senses and realize that everything that they heard was a lie. Uh, but then again, Fannie Mae lied about their earnings for $6 billion. So, right, you know, and Bristol Myers lied. It's just fiction yeah. and fiction and fiction. And I think it's important for people to recognize that the way that the market really works is to is to have that nexus of, of hit the brokerage houses with a series of orders that can push it down, then leak it to the press. Um, and then get it on CNBC. That's also very important. And, and then you have a kind of a vicious cycle down. Right. And it's a pretty good game. And it can be played. You pay for a percent or two. Right. And then do you get long before Macworld and the expectation that the well, yeah, iPhone is, is going to be down. good? Right. And then you go you, back you, to the long got to use the other side. <laughs> <laughs> so you manipulate the stock down and then you go long. Just, you know. You know, and there's a case where I would say the January 80 puts can be justified. Because after I've knocked the stock down to 80, I can buy a lot of common. And then you play it right into Macworld, where they'll probably introduce the phone, and Verizon's going to take it. Okay. Well, maybe the fundamentals don't matter, but let's talk about the well, Fed. Remember, a bit. I, what, what Wall Street Confidential is, yes. is is not giving you the party line. Oh, here's the right. party line, by the way. Um, the, I, 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 I spoke to Apple, the phone. I hear the phones are good, and um, Verizon might take it. And as a matter of fact, the research and motion sellers, they, I don't think they know what they're talking about. It, Mm, you know. But you've been writing about the cell market, cell phone market. You see that you, you, you know, what he's talking about there is playing at both sides. So you go short, you, you, you know, you get all these rumors out, negative stuff, right? The stock goes down 8, 10, 12, 15%. Then you go long, right? Uh, while it's down huge, you send out the rumors. Oh, no, that was actually false. Now we're hearing, you know, da, da, da. And uh, then you all of a sudden make 8, 10, 12, 15% on the other side. And it's like, wow, you know, that was a, that was an easy cleanup there. You don't want to well, be involved problem, with that, The problem right? with the cell phone market, frankly, is, is that these guys are all killing each other. You know, right. someone has to take a dive. Motorola and Nokia have to get in a room and just fix price. They've been reluctant to do that because of the various justice departments and because they and actually... And it's illegal, right? Yeah. Whoa, that, that hasn't stopped a lot of other companies. This, this is true. This <laughs> seems to be... a case where they seem to be doing it reminds me of a it reminds me of training day you guys ever watch training day great movie with denzel washington and there's uh the other guy oh what's his name edwin or edward or whatever uh but anyways he's like the, the honest uh you know is supposed to be like the the incoming detective who's supposed to be like real honest and just truthful and whatnot and then there's denzel washington who's like trying to explain to him like how it re how it really works so this reminds me of this, worried this about is training day. it's almost as if they have a lawyer that that matters on, like, say, the Bristol Myers lawyers. And, you know, what eventually happens is the shareholders demand that you get phony lawyers and you sit in the room. And it'll happen soon. Real quick, the Fed, the numbers out today weaker than expected. Oh, so PC what? The Fed has obviously got a cut. But, They've you know, again, cut. you call, you call um, the various guys who cover the bonds and you say, to ignore the bond action. What's really happened is the Fed is very frightened about and then you gin up the number that they're really frightened about. The Fed is actually... Um, Desperate to try to figure out, uh, you know, how quickly they have to cut without looking like dopes that they that they raised. Right, because in they've May. been talking about they're worried yeah, about inflation. All this. You don't want to. You don't want to raise in May and then cut in, in January. You look like Mexico for heaven's sake. I mean, this is like a distinguished group of people who went to really good schools. Right, these are smart guys. Absolutely. Yeah, they don't want to look like dopes. Uh, but when we were talking earlier in the week, you said you think it would be some sort of crisis, possibly Ford being a trigger. Well, you know, Ford went and did all that, you know, they pledged all this investment banking to all these guys. So now that they're very reluctant to say negative things, it, it makes it much tougher for the Ford story to play out. I mean, the amount of business that Ford has to do. Ford may be the big client of 2007. So if I were in the corporate finance room, I would say, listen to, to the research guy. I said, listen, you know, I spoke with Malayli. I actually have the inside. The plan works. So then you're the research guy and you say, oh, man, what do I do? Um, it's bonus time. I'm not going to be a total idiot. Spitzer's going to Albany. 
L- let's get back in the game. Right. I uh, think that's important. Is it possible? Because a year ago at this time, a lot of people were saying GM's about to go bankrupt, and of course the stock's up 50 some odd percent. Well, they're, you know, they're, they're GM. You know, the GM, the difference between Ford and GM was the GM's balance sheet was never really, it turned out wasn't that bad. Ford's balance sheet's pathetic, and you know that because they were willing to screw over the common for the bonds. Right. That's kind of, a, if, if it weren't Ford, if this were um, Qualcomm, We'd be saying Qualcomm is desperate, you know, but no, it's Ford. But it's so Ford, it's, it's an Ford. American icon. Yeah, I, I drove until, a right. Ford, you know, I owned a Ford once. And this is our country. Well, yeah, this right. has been Jim Cramer for Wall it, Street Again, you know, I, what I'm trying to go for in the Wall Street Confidential, and I'm not saying you're sending me, I, I have to talk about what it's like at my hedge fund, okay, because, and what other hedge funds do. Because the difference is, is that if this is an intraday show, and you need to know what's going, what I know is going right. on. Now, we step back. Research in Motion was a real blowout quarter. It was a really good quarter. And I was quite surprised how strong the margins were. It looks like the other guys have really dropped out. It's a terrific story. Should it be up six? Yeah, I think so. But, you know. So, you know, moral of the story is when it comes to um, kind of my finishing thoughts on, on all this, you've got to understand, like, market manipulation is going on. You're not going to stop it. It's going to keep going on. That's the way it works, okay? Um, and so... Now, knowing that that is going on, right, knowing that you, you have to deal with that, you have two options. You can say, well, market's manipulated. I want no part of the market, right? Or you can say, okay, I just understand that's part of the game. I'm going to focus on my plan, my long-term objectives. If they want to send stocks down to ridiculous prices and I get to buy those stocks, cool, whatever, okay? If they want to send stocks to a way uh, overvaluation, if they want to make up rumors, positive, negative, whatever, Cool. I'm going to deal with that. I'm going to stick with my plan. I'm going to have a diversified portfolio of 10, 20 stocks. Uh, If I get some insane dips, I'm going to keep buying those dips. And if it's a great company, it's going to grow over time. Believe me, I've never seen it over the long term where that stock price was not reflected. A company that continues to grow year after year after year, revenues, their profitability, everything just keeps better and better, margins, all those things. I've never seen it once in my 14 years of being in the stock market where that stock price was not rewarded over time. And so this is very, very important to remember because all this short-term stuff, all this manipulation, all these games they play, it, that's all it is in the end. It's all a short-term game, and you can actually benefit because, like I said, sometimes they'll send these stocks down way further than really they deserve to go. Some of these stocks, you know, they go down to two dollars, four dollars, six dollars. They don't deserve to be down there, right? They got good balance sheets, like they got an actual business model that's growing and growing. Um, but they'll send those stocks down there, and it's, as you, as an investor, it's you just got to stay laser focused on the long term on these companies. And if you get those dips, you got to buy those dips, and um, you just got to kind of call it a day there. And you got to understand they're going to play a lot of games in between. They're going to try to get you scared. They're going to try to get you to sell out. They're going to try to get you to give up. That's all part of the game. Um, and so you just got to understand that. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. A little bit of a different video uh, than than usually I put out, but I thought this would be helpful to the retail community. So I appreciate you guys joining me. Much love as always, and have a great day.